Ja, ik wil ook even nee, hier is gewoon niet zo nee, zo niet zo nee, ik wil alles in vaken krokodils en vaken dingen uit en dan ga je maar. Hij je dit, maar. En hoe zo dat je bent, maar. Ja, om kaart, ik kan niet, ik moet eens met kaart, maar. Wrangle en dangle, wrangle en dangle de klok, en wrangle en dingen uit de oven. Whatever that means. <laughs> Now you're having a good day. So this is just me cooking carbonara, right? Yeah, um, it's not really, and um, like you know, like an adventurous dish. It doesn't really take much doing. It's not hard to do. It's not anything that's special. But the ingredients are as follows. So we have some grated mature cheddar cheese. Right. Well, in fact, let me just get through the ingredients and explain what's happening with this rumble video, right? We got one red pepper. We got salt. We got pepper. We got paprika. We got two red onions. We got some fresh ginger. Some garlic. We got some mushrooms. We got some diced chicken. And we got some carbonara resource, man. We got some carbonara resource, man. Now just gotta prepare all the vegetables. Ready for the cooking process. The cooking process is quite easy, man. We'll explain when we get there. Right now we're here. We're not there. All right, man? Right, the rumble video was ready to go. I've made the rumble video, man. I made it yesterday. All right, hi, hi. But there was a problem, man. There was a video I wanted to put at the beginning that I took from Instagram. I watched it on Instagram ages ago. And I shared it to my other phone, which is this phone right now, onto the WhatsApp on this phone. It's all good and hood. But I can't save the video from the Instagram because the clicky clicky with the link to the phone, which I realized last night, man. Now I got another video with Russell Brand on my other phone, which tonight I'm going to work on breaking up and putting it at the beginning of the video that I've already made. I've even made the pin, man. I just need to put this shit together. Put it on there. So that's why you haven't had your Rumble video yet. The Rumble video was made. I spoke about it and I need to speak about it in that goddamn shit. I just need to get it all together, man. I need to I need to collaborate that shit. I need to get that video right there, which I've already done with me talking, talking about the situation. Uh, then I need to get a Russell Brand video from the 11-minute video I got. I don't know whether to just put the 11 minute video at the beginning of the video, man. I got the full 11 minutes there, man. What do you guys think? Do you think I should just put, I'll say hello to you all in a minute before I start cooking. Right, but listen, give me, give me a heads up here, fans. Family Ams. Should I just put the whole 11 minute Russell Brand clip at the beginning before I talk? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? You feeling frisky? So what do you reckon, man? Give me some heads up. Give me some information. Do you think I should just put... That'll make the video about 20 minutes long, though, man. About 21 minutes long. So what I'm saying to you, man. I mean, do you want to sit there and watch a 21-minute video? Russell Brand talking for 11 minutes about the subject at hand. And then me talking for another 10 minutes about the subject that he just spoke about. Okay, then, man. That's easy to do. I'll do, well, what I'll do, man, is I'll send that shit from my iPhone to this Samsung. And I'll get it uploaded for you tonight. I don't know what time it'll be uploaded, but it'll be uploaded for you tonight, man. So look on the goddamn Rumble channel. And that video will be there tonight for you to watch and go and enjoy. You can go and fact check that shit. And the thing is with Russell Brand, as you know, everything's fact checked on the show. He has more of an ability with his producers than Danny G, yo. He's been going for a long while and he's got millions of subs. He's got his own little room and his own little dubs. So at the end of the day, I'll put him there first. You can listen to him and get a bit of a thirst for what the energy is going to say after the man himself. So look out for the videos, my peeps. It'll be available tonight. I don't know what time. It'll be available tonight. Let me shop on my knife. And I'll come and say hello. I'll scroll up the chat. I'm gonna say hello to everybody individually. And then we're gonna start with the cooking process, man.
goddamn cooking process. Oh, Tony G in the background. Hail to Tony G. Hail to Tony G. Goddamn wife, man. Damn. Goddamn, Danny G. Tony G. Ooh, too hot to handle, too hot to touch. Goddamn. I'm just sharpening my knife. All right, wife? If you're wondering why I use these little knives, yeah? I just prefer them, all jokes aside. I actually prefer these little knives, so. Because I don't know, I just took chopping vegetables and I just prefer them. Now let me wash it off. And then we can start. And I'll say hello to you all. We're in chat right now. You're gonna get hello from the Danny G well. How's everybody's day doing? I better better bye. Alright, here we go. I'd say hello to everybody. Enrique, my brother, and David Curry, how you doing, man? Mr. DC, respect. Harry Canyon, respect. Oh, here we go. Focacci. Am I saying this right? This sounds like I might be saying this wrong, yes. There's no insult intended. Focaccia to Matia, Matita. <laughs> to, my man, to my mind, that's how it sounds. So I do apologise if I have just murdered that. Joyce, Andrew, the wise mini goat. Billy Kimber, Dylan, the uh, GB, and Mr. Monza. Yeah, how is everybody? Are you all having a good day, mate? Yeah, you all having a good day. Right, come with the cooking pro process, all right? Come with the cooking process. Who's uh, Eham Neo? I'll just call you Neo, yeah? Right? You must be far away in another time zone. Yes, Hamsley, how are you doing? So, red onions first. I'm just going to chop these. Now, with the red onions, right? Yeah, I'll show you it all chopped on the side when it's done. So, I'll chop through it all. And then I'll show you on, it all chopped up on the side. Um, cooking with, listen, mate. If you're cooking with koala cave, you have yourself a bloody kangaroo steak on the go. But today we just got some chicken. Some chicken. Oh, I've never seen a chicken in the outback. You don't get things that small. <laughs> so now today, mate, you're just cooking with a bit of Danny G, maybe a little bit of koala cave. More have Derek from the United States pop in now and again. You could have the Australian crazy guy by himself. You could end up getting yourself a mad Scottish guy from the Highlands at some point. You never know what's going to go on with Danny J, mate. His mind works in mysterious ways. Oh, I can't. No, I can't. I'm a can't. Everybody's a fucking can't. <laughs> GB, I hope you've had a good day, mate. I hope you've had a good day. It's all about positivity, my brother. It's all about positivity, mate. You can't keep it real here. If you want to keep yourself positive in life, don't take it all so seriously, mate. <laughs> and don't take yourself seriously, because if you take yourself seriously, you're cutting yourself off from fucking plenty of laughs and giggles. The life's all about the laughs and the giggles. <laughs> That was quite a key for those of you that don't know. That might be the first time you've ever uh, been introduced to quite a key. <laughs> it's a little, it's an entity. It's a crazy Australian guy that lives inside my soul. Yeah, me and quite a key are quite close. Put it that way. I have, a, I have a crazy Scottish guy that lives in my soul as well. He's absolutely off his fucking head. Um, now I've been to play golf, Dylan. It's not dark, it's getting dark. My favourite song of all, always oh, a question. <sighs> Single song. I have two songs that are like my favourite songs for different reasons. Um, one of them, unfortunately, I cannot listen to no more. I can't do it. I can't even listen to it. And that is the one that was played at my son's funeral, which was 
we both love that song. And I can tell you what song it is. It's in the arms of the angel, right? But I can't listen to that no more. I used to sing it really good, you know, that song. But I can't listen to it no more. I can't sing it. And the other one is Kenny Rogers' Lady. I mean, um, because that song there is what Tony walked down the aisle to, to our wedding, which was like probably the happiest day of my life. So, yeah, that, that song there has some meaning because it was like, obviously, all my kids was there. My dad walked Tony down the aisle, which you've all probably seen the wedding video. If you haven't seen the wedding video, by the way, it's on my channel. Just type in Danny G Wedding Day and you can watch the wedding video. Watch me cry like a big girl. You're happy tears they are, by the way. They're not sad tears, they're happy tears, right? And, um, yeah, it's, that song has meaning for me. I, I can sing that song because it's a happy, you know, it's a happy vibe. But the other song, unfortunately, I can't ever listen to it ever again, you know. It's a shame because I loved that song, but so did Anthony. So that's why it was played at his funeral. We both loved that song. So but you can understand probably why I can't listen to it again, you know what I mean? It's not something that I can actually listen to without breaking down kind of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, Kenny's a, Kenny's a legend. Oh, I love listening. I love all Ward Rooney's music. All Ward Rooney's music, bro. And all Danheim's music. And all um, of Leaf Gear's music. Uh, because it's my kind of music. But they're not my favourite songs. Favourite songs have meaning. Um, like, one of my favourite songs. It's not, it's not up there with my favourite songs, but it wasn't even my favourite song. It was one of my dad's favourite songs. Yeah, and it was unforgettable. And my dad used to sing that song, right? And fucking hell, man, do you know what I mean? Like, it just reminds me of my dad. It just reminds me of my fucking dad. So, yeah, that song has meaning as well. Songs can have meaning, do you know what I mean? Like, music can be meaningful. There's no real preparing for a nuclear war, buddy. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing really much you can do. So that's the onions done, by the way. I'll show you it all chopped when it's done. Yeah, Unforgettable is one of my dad's favourite tunes of all time. And he did sing it well. Yeah, he sung that at my wedding day. On stage in front of a thousand people. No joke. Because what you see on the pagoda on my wedding day in the video is not actually what it was like underneath that. There was a vast night going on in the hotel, like and all thousand plus guests were down there for that show. So they, most of them witnessed my wedding. And then on the night time, because it was my wedding day, they did like, they had monks on stage. They had like Colombian women, you know, shaking their ass dancing. They had magicians on stage. Um, and then also they had a massive cake brought onto stage. And when I say massive, I mean humongous. This thing was massive. It was the biggest cake I've ever seen in my life. And because it was mine and Tony's wedding day, the guys to cook the cake. And then they let my dad sing a song on stage in front of all these fucking people. My dad come on and smash that unforgettable mush. He just went on there like a true pro, no nerves whatsoever. You know what I mean? This is a song for my son and my daughter-in-law. Happy wedding day. I love you both. And then bang, just blasted it out like a true G and that. Go on, dad. <laughs> he did a really good job as well. He did a really good job. Do you know what I mean? So fair play, Dad. So my dad became part of the fucking stage show. It was a bit mad. Do you know what I mean? Good wedding day, that. Good wedding day. Brilliant memories. Brilliant, brilliant memories. Cost a lot of fucking money, but brilliant memories. Yeah, a real legend. Um, yeah, it's their, their kind of memories. You can't really, you can't, you can't buy them. They did cost a lot of money to make them memories, but every penny was worth it. Life is all about memories, yeah. I mean, that holiday and that wedding was over 20 grand, but that was like 13 years ago. So it was like probably worth over 30 grand now or something. Do you know what I mean, right? And I did all that in 18 months, like with paying the bills as well. I was working two jobs. That's when I was working the doors, yeah. Um, so I was working in the daytime and then I was also working the doors <laughs> as often as I could. Right, so I was constantly working, man. And I swear, the amount of hours that I was doing, it ripped me off, you know. Plus, I was at the gym, training like a monster. Every time I had a chance, I was at the gym for like, some, some days I was there for eight hours, you know. Full eight hours at the gym. 
non-stop training because I was working so much. So every time I got a chance, even on a Sunday and that, man, I'm not joking. It was just like gym, train like a beast. Do you know what I mean? Work, 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 work. Gym, train like a beast. <laughs> work, 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 work. Gym, train like a beast. I was fortunate my gym was open 24 hours a day, so I could go there any time of the day. I was very fortunate, really. Have I seen Purge? Um, purge, the Purge, the Purge, the Purge. Ain't that... I don't think I've... Bob? Have I watched the Purge? Is that one once a year we get to kill everybody? Tony says, is that once a year where they get to kill everybody? Yeah, it is. I've heard of it. Yeah, it is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we have watched one of them. Have I watched one of them? Yeah. I don't remember it, though. So yeah, I think I have watched one then, but I don't remember it. Yeah. The one we watch is when the other pair hunts in the house and all the house gets locked up. I don't remember. We watched the horror yesterday though. Um, you're only two away from 100 subscribers. Well done. Oh, by the way, listen, Beezy's in chat. Yo, Beezy, type something. Beezy. In fact, type the link to your fucking channel. Hamsley, type the link to your channel in chat. Both of you. Put the link to your channels in chat. Anybody who's got a channel, yeah? Put your link to channel in chat. And then everybody go and give everybody a follow. Spread the love, that baby. Spread the love. So put the links to your channels in chat. I don't mind people advertising themselves here, man. I don't mind at all. Obviously, you, you all know who trolls are and stuff, folks. If any of them come in chat, don't just ban them. Don't let them put links in chat. Yeah, but, you know, any of the people, you know, that are on here supporting me, I don't mind supporting back, and I like to spread the love, so, do you know I mean? for those people, you know, like BZ, but that's not the name of his channel, yeah, like Hamsley, um, so go and give them a follow, folks. Help out the new channels as much as you can to help them grow. What's Tony's favourite dish from me? Well, she's not here to ask her. So I'll ask her when she comes down. I'm not sure. Ah, uh, what's your favourite dish that I cook? Oh, one of my dishes. YouTube one enough. Right, you know when I make the pork chops, and I coat them. Yeah, and I do like creamy mashed potato and leeks and gravy. That's her favourite. And prawn cocktail. And prawn cocktail. I was gonna I was just about to say man, what about prawn cocktail mate? <laughs> In fact, yeah, here's a question for you. Out of them two dishes, yeah, which one's your favourite then? Prawn cocktail or the pork chops and that? The pork chops you like more than the prawn cocktail? Oh, that surprised me. Oh, that's a proper meal, isn't it? Yeah, it is a proper meal. So it's still surprised me. It's nice that you can still surprise your husband, babe. You can't surprise when we go out for food, though, because when we go out for food, there's just no surprise when it's surprising there. Even it was funny, because when we went out for Von's birthday, we went out for Tony's mate's birthday, Tony's mate's 60th the other day, yeah? And we're all at the table, right? And they're like, Danny, they said to me, Danny, if you was going to choose Tony's meal now, what would you choose? I went, F mixed grill. Right, straight away. Right, mixed grill. And then all of Tony's friends from work went, yeah, yeah, that's all she eats. Because <laughs> it is, you know. We go out, you can have a menu of 50 things. Right, and Tony will look through and she'll go, oh, that sounds nice. That sounds nice. Unless we have sharing. Yeah, that sounds nice. Uh, always a mixed grill. Unless, like she said, unless we have sharing platters, it's always a mixed grill, you know. That is Tony's, that is Tony's thing. She loves mixed grills, man. It's a thing. With me, it's kind of like... I'm always happy with a burger. Yeah? And I, I do like mixed grills. But I kind of like experiment, you know? Like, if I go in a new place and there's something on the menu and I'm not sure what it is, I'll have it just to try it because I like most things. I don't like liver. I don't like kidney. Yeah? Um... I mean, is there anything else I don't like other than liver and kidney? There ain't, is there really? Don't think so. 
What tripod do I use? Um, a lot. I like steak, Andrew. What tripod do I use? It's just a tripod. I'll show you. I'll show you it in a bit. Remind me a little bit later. I'll show you. Right, so I've done the red onions. I've done the garlic. I've done the ginger. I've done the red pepper. No mushrooms. Right. Now, with the mushrooms, it's entirely up to you, this. But trust me, it's a much more beneficial thing for you to do. Right. There we are, look. Here's my old one. Same one, though. That's my tripod, though. You just ordered, um, ordered the tomorrow. Right, so when you're doing these mushrooms, right? I mean, I'll show you all this chopped in a minute. When you're doing these mushrooms, take that out. And trust me, peel the outer layer of skin off. Because otherwise the taste very earthy. Sometimes, if it depends on the mushroom, right? Oh, shit you not, they can taste like soil. If you don't do this, you know, I swear. So peel your mushrooms, trust me. So stalk out, yeah, peel, look. Just peel the mushroom all the way around. Uh, I'm not watching Villa tonight, mate, because I've got a Twitch stream. So I'll catch the highlights, but I've got a, I've got a Twitch stream, mate. So I'm playing Call of Duty tonight. I'm only going to come on for a couple of hours, but I really need to get some practice on that game because I went on the other night for the first time in a year, buddy, and I got absolutely wasted. No, they're not magic. Neo, have a very good day tomorrow, my friend, and have a good night's sleep. Sweet dreams, mate. I hope your dreams are full of absolute wickedness. Absolute, like, just fun and madness. And you wake up in the morning feeling absolutely wicked. We're nearly there. If you wonder why I put so, like I do put a lot of effort on it into every meal that I cook. Do you know why that is? That is because it, the more effort you put in your meal, the better it tastes. It's that simple, man. The more ingredients you put in, the better it tastes as well. I'm nearly done now, by the way, so I'll show you all this stuff chopped up. You get an idea of how small I chop it and how or how big I chop it, whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah, you get an idea. It doesn't want to be mega fine, but it doesn't want to be big. And it all wants to be kind of the same size apart from the garlic and the ginger. That wants to be cut fine. Because they are roots, you know what I mean? So like especially ginger, ginger is a tough root. And it will cook pretty quick. But you still don't want big chunks of ginger in your food. Trust me, you don't. Because that shit, if you bite into a big chunk of like half raw ginger, it'll spoil your whole meal, man. I'm not even joking. But because ginger and garlic are so good for you, you should really be putting them in nearly every meal that you cook, or as much as you can. In fact, I'm going to do another two mushrooms there. Another two. I'm going to do two more mushrooms, two more mushrooms. If I had to live on one meal, it would be my Viking meatballs, mate. Without a shadow of a doubt. Because it, and it's just full of everything the body needs. So it would be one of my own dishes. It's not being big headed or nothing. It's not the tastiest dish I've ever had in the world. It tastes nice, don't get me wrong, it tastes lovely. But it's not obviously the most beautiful tasting thing, but I know what it's filled with. It's filled with pure <coughs> nourishment, bro. Pure. It's just so good for you. So that's what I need. Because it tastes nice and it's full of goodness. my channel type in Danny G Viking Meatballs mate you've got me cooking it on here so you can follow the recipe so here we are so, the ingredients 
ingredients. Red pepper, garlic, ginger, sorry, sorry red onion, <laughs> garlic, ginger, red pepper, mushrooms, chicken, carbonara sauce, salt, pepper, paprika. That's it. Right, that is all that is needed for this. All right, cooking process. I'm going to cook it in a tiny bit of rapeseed oil, yeah, and I'm going to cook it in mainly butter, like a big spoonful of butter, right? Real butter, like proper butter, you know, like proper butter, right? Um, and then basically, I'm going to put the garlic, the ginger, and the red onions in. I'm going to cook them for a couple of minutes. Then I'm going to add the chicken. I'm going to cook the chicken through. Then I'm going to add the red, the um, red pepper. Cook that for about a minute. Add the mushrooms. Cook that for about a minute. Then I'm going to put some salt, pepper, and paprika in there. Then I'm going to add the sauce. Let it cook for about forty-five minutes. Done. So I have to bring you over here for this now, because we're over by the uh, we're over by the cooking now. So cooking time. Get yourself obviously clean pan, yeah. I've got some. What the fuck is that in the bottom of my pan? What is that in the bottom of my pan? I don't know. I've got something in the bottom of my pan. What the fuck is that? What is that? What that is? That's some dry white thing. I'm not sure what it is. It's gone now. Though. That's it. Right, heat the pan. Tiny bit. Tiny drop. Just a drop. All right. Butter. Spoonful of butter helps the bloody food go down. The food go down. Food go down. A spoonful of butter helps the food go down in the most delicious way. Uh, right. Garlic and ginger can go straight in. And so can the red onion. But also go straight in. Because I use stainless steel pans, I can just use steel on it. I don't really have to worry about it. Yeah, and we're going to stir this up now for a couple of minutes, right? Stir it up for a couple of minutes. It's getting quite hot in there now. Not mega hot, but it's getting quite hot now. All the butter's melted. Keep it moving though, because it's on a high heat at the moment. Yeah, so when I keep it moving, the garlic and the ginger will burn. So keep this shit moving, all right? Don't worry, I'll let you see throughout the cooking process where we're at and what we're doing. Really. Time being, just keep the cooking thing moving. Trust me, do not stop it moving. Because you've got a high heat on, you do not want to burn the ginger or the garlic. Because burnt ginger and burnt garlic doesn't taste very nice. It tastes a bit in rank, mate. I'm going to be honest with you right now, yeah? Burnt garlic and burnt ginger taste a bit absolutely rank, mate. It's the best way to describe it, do you know what I mean? So you don't want to be doing that, yeah? You just don't want to be doing it, mate. So I'll make sure that you keep it moving in the pan. Don't let it settle in the pan. Keep it moving in the pan. All right, mate. Yeah. Keep it like this, yeah. I'll show you what I mean, mate. I'll show you what I mean. You know what this is? You keep moving it in the pan. Keep moving it in the pan. Don't stop moving it in the pan. You know what I mean, mate? Keep moving it in the pan, mate. In the pan. 
Oh. That shit's making my eyes water. Right now, add the chicken. If I've got it on a plate. Oh my god, my eyes water. Add the chicken. Chicken, chicken. It's been diced, it's been sliced, and it's ready to go. Right then, add the chicken. I'm going to let this cook through. This chicken's raw right now. I don't know why onions make you cry. So we're here. We're going to cook the chicken through until it's white, man. Until it's white, man. We don't want it pink, man. It's not good for you. Make sure you cook that chicken until it's white all the way through. You don't want no pink chicken. It's not good for you, man. Trust energy. Don't eat the pink chicken, only eat the white chicken. Don't eat the pink chicken. Oh, you know, less case scenario, you end up on the toilet for hours. Worst case scenario, you end up in the A&E. Right, I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight, chicken tonight. Oh, Tony's just subscribed to you, Amsley. Tony's just sub to you, lad. He's got a bloody sub for Tony. Joyce says hello, man. Hi, Joyce. Did you hear that, Joyce? No, because I haven't finished the cooking process yet, bro. That'll be done when I've finished. That will be done when I've finished. I haven't finished the cooking process yet, man. God damn. Not yet, man. I still got some more ingredients to go in. Now I'm wait for the chicken to cook first. Well, until it's virtually cooked anyway. And then I'll go over there and I'll get that red, that red pepper and those mushrooms in over there, man. I'll put them in the pan. I'll add some salt. I'll add some pepper, a little bit of paprika. And it'll be magic, man. It'll be like magic man hour. Add the sauce. Add the saucy sauce. And then after the sauce, I'm gonna let that shit cook for about four or five minutes. It cook for about four to five. Four to five, Danny G. Not, not, not 35. You can go 55 if you want, but we're not going 35. It's gonna be 45 minutes. Now 55 if you want, man, you can have 95. You can have 135. It don't matter. The longer it cooks, the more flavor it's got. But you don't want no 35. That's Derek, he's from Los Angeles, man. I don't even know if I just see Los Angeles people sound like this. It might not, but it might do. I don't know. There you go, sub to the guys channel. God damn, that is you. Give me loads of subs today, man. That's the job, spread the love. Spread the love, not the hate. Spread the love, not the hate, man. Don't bring that hate in this room. We don't need that hate round here. We just need the love, man. Cause he's a love man. Oh. Danny G's a love man. <laughs> Let's make friends, fam. Cause I'm a love man. No negativity or positivity. I don't know. But all I'm gonna show. There's a smile on my face every day. Danny G going A. -A. I wear a smile on my face every day. I said Danny G going A. -A. <laughs> yes, done the man. I'm good, man. I'm always good, man. God damn. Why is this Danny G always in a good mood, man? Why is he always in a good mood, man? Because life's too short to be in a bad one. That's why. Oh, I understand now, Danny G. I didn't look at it about that, my friend. Well, I'm uniquely aware that this could be your last day on earth. A life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You got to take the rough with the smooth there, boy. He 
Yes, Dan the man. Thank you very much, my friend. It's always a good environment in my lives. Because we keep it like that. We keep it all nice and tight. Smiling and laughing and joking with each other is the way to go. Huh? Would you roll me a dooby dooby doo so I can smoke it in the kitchen room while I'm cooking goddamn cooking up this tea? No, man. Goddamn split the reef of the boss, man. I don't, I don't want no cigarette unless it's got dream in it. Green in it, hit. Come on, man. You know me by now. I'm not drinking better, my little wife. I'm just drinking on some Fanta Pop. So I might need something to help me rock. That's green in nature and green in name. You know what I mean, my babe. So can you roll me a big fat one and bring it in here? So I can smoke it in February of year 2024. I'm making this Kanabarama for all y'all. <laughs> There's no point asking me. All right. People ask me sometimes, uh, I don't know where it comes from. It's not scripted. It's just, it's just, it's just me, and it? it's just where I am. I'm a bit razzed in the head. I mean, you've not been here before, and this is the first time you've done like this all the bloody time. Yes, old school days, goddamn, when the sun's out. When the sun's out, man, when I'm getting that sunlight, I'm like Superman. Sunlight hits me, and you know what happens? Sunlight hits me in the eye, and then it's Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> so we're cooking up this grub. Dub a dub dub. Now, to be honest, it's pretty done. So right now, I'm gonna add me a little bit of salt and peppery, mate. With a little bit of Eka. You get me all. <laughs> so we got the we got the salt, yeah. You get me all, fam. We got the pepper, yeah? You get me the old fam. And then we got the pap. Erra, 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 eke, you get me the old bruv. Erra, erra. Get the paprika in the pan. You know what I mean, bruv? And then we're gonna go some salt in the pan. Don't be scared of that seat. Don't, don't, don't be scared of the seed, old fam. Some pepper in there as well. You get me? Remember, the correct way to say it is still is paprika. Ara, 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 you get me, you know? <laughs> yeah, a lot of you people don't even know what I'm going on about, but there's a geezer. Yeah, who does that. Do you know what I mean? He's funny as fuck, man. He makes me laugh. Proper makes me laugh. So a lot of you might not even know what I'm about there. But yeah, he geezer makes me laugh, man, I swear it's funny. Alright now, we're gonna turn the heat down, yeah, so I'll show you where we're at. So we're here now. It's all cooked up in the pan. Yeah? So we're gonna turn the heat down. We're gonna add the sauce and the cheese and then we're going to let it cook for ages cover it up with some silver foil put some holes in the top of the silver foil well my dad's friend Mankey Tetley Mankey Tetley, Eric Tetley um, fucking who else? Bob Gaskin, Danny Shenton, Martin Kamara. These are all my dad's friends. They're all really older gentlemen now, mate. 
Tough men though, back in the day, all of them tough men, to be fair. So here we go. Getting them sauces in there, mush. Feeling so safe. Yeah, pure old school geezers, mate. My dad was very good friends with them. My dad worked the door with most of them back in the day. Um, so, do you know them? Do you know these? Do you know these people I'm talking about? You're from Doncaster, bro. You're from Donny. You'll know my mother. No joke. If you're from Doncaster, mate. You'll know my mom. I swear. My mom still lives in Doncaster. She has all her life, really. And my mum's very well known in Donny. Right, cheese. My mum's like, you know, Mama Jean. Now stir all this in. So, well basically before I stir it all in. Then the man says hello, Tony. So before I stir it all in, cheese and the carbonara sauce, right? Yeah? And then we're going to stir it all in. With everything that's in there, nothing comes out of the pan. All the flavours stay in the pan. Yeah? Leave all the flavours in there. Oh, this is very thick and creamy. This is how it should be, to be fair. Very thick and creamy. Yeah? And now I've mixed it all in. And get an idea of what it looks like. Tangatelli with this, by the way. So that is how it is, yeah? Now I'm going to put silver foil over the top of it and leave it for 45 minutes. Respect to you. So silver foil over the top of it. Poke a few holes in the silver foil. Now, leave that for 45 minutes. Jobs of fish. All right. There we go. Where's that split, Bob? Thank you, babe. Thank you, sweetheart. Little star. And there we go. Let that cook for 45 minutes. Jobs of fish, Fanny's your own, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> yes, Enrique. <laughs> yes, bro. Oh, so there we go. I can have a chat with you for a bit now. Now I've done the cooking. It's done now. It's good. Um, uh, I might not be on live when it's finished. So I'll do, I'll take a picture of it and put it on my community space. When it's done on the plate, I'll take a picture. Yeah, so you can see what it's all, what, it, what it's like. If I'm still live, when it's done, yeah, then you'll be sweet on it. So it depends upon it. I had uh, a hard game, a hard game of golf today. The, the course, man. Anybody who was watching, the second hole was all me. The first hole and the second hole was all me. No, Doncaster's in Yorkshire, South Yorkshire. Um, it was all me that. There was my mistakes through rushing and being too much testosterone filled and just rushing, basically. It was my own fault. Right? But every hole after that had nothing to do with me. It was just temporary greens and there was shit. Like really bad. I couldn't put on them because it was. I was putting on fairway. It was shocking, man. I am not playing that course again till the summer. It's done my head in today. 
<laughs> yes, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> So you know, I could probably start a cooking business. You know that? I probably could, right? I probably could start a cooking business selling Viking meatballs and shit. Danny's fucking spaghetti bolognese and that. I probably could, you know. <laughs> you know what you did? Did you put bacon in? No. Oh, I forgot to put bacon in it. It's the only thing I've I forgot to put fucking bacon in it, man. So yeah, everything I've just done, but add some bacon to it, chopped up. Can't believe I forgot it. Viking eats. <laughs> Viking eats, you know, bro. <laughs> uh, Listen, it'd be a lot fucking healthier than anything you would currently order off Just Eats. I'll tell you that now, it would be full of health. Like with me, like you'd probably pay £10, right, for your Viking meatballs. But I'm telling you, mate, oh, 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 full of pure health, that, mate. Full of pure, pure health, that. Them Viking meatballs are not anything to be underrated, trust me. Close to Sheffield. Doncaster's next door to Sheffield. It's about 10 miles away. Literally about 10 miles away. Add James, who is training tomorrow. So you'll see James tomorrow. He's here tomorrow with his mum. Uh, this is training day. So James is from um, Chesterfield, just before Sheffield. So James is from that area, kind of. I'm going to break that boy in my front room tomorrow. No gym tomorrow for James. It's front room training. Basically full body, which I do with him every so often, as you know. Oh, I'm going to, ah, oh, this is, they're hard, you know. And when it's in the front room, it's a lot harder than when I go to the gym, you know. Because you end up doing so many more reps. And it's so much faster. And it's grueling. Do you know what I mean? It really is, man. The way I train in my front room with just that bar. I can do more, you know, with that 20 key bar than when you see me get to the gym and lift all that weight. It has more of an effect on my body. Different kind of effect, but more of an effect. Not more of an effect in growth. Don't get me wrong. No, 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 that's bullshit. Me doing bare reps in there is what keeps me slim. Me doing all these hundreds and thousands of reps a week. When I train like I've been training for the last month, that's why I put so much size on. That's why I am now Tonk. Like, bigger than you guys have seen me for a while. It's because of the way I've been training. Yeah, but it's, it's actually affecting my golf, you know. I'm hitting the ball miles, which is quite evident today on camera. Fuck me, I'm hitting the ball miles. I'm I'm hitting over 300 yards in my fucking three wood now. My fucking driver is 330 yards minimum. It's mad. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I'm hitting the ball miles, man. It's the extra power weight and it's the extra four pound, five pound I've put on. But Jesus Christ, man. I'm not comfortable over the ball on any other shot. Like the, the, the little of the shot. The worse it is for me now. So if I've got like a 50-yard chip, you put me on the tee with a driver, I'll send it miles. But you give me a 50-yard chip, mate. My body, my mechanics aren't working the same with the extra size. It's done me in a little bit, to be fair. Because trust me, folks, I'm pretty tonk right now. I'm near 14 stone. And he's like a Spartan. I know, Mosh. Ooh, la. Ooh, la. Spartans, what is your profession? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Beastie Spartans, bro. So, yeah, I've only got like, I've got three more sessions at the gym lifting heavy to just put that extra bulk on for when I have my hand operation and then that's it then when when my hand's done and the cast comes off back to normal training for me because I don't need to be big do you know what I mean not for what I do in life 
You've all seen it though. How quickly you can put on some fucking size. No, I haven't. In that edit called 300 genders, I bet it's funny as fuck. Yeah, I bet it's funny as fuck. <laughs> I bet it's hilarious, man. It sounds like something that would be funny, innit? I've got some work to do tonight now, but I'm just one more video. I've got to upload the golf like tutorial of our warm up from earlier. Um, fighting training. I'm just self taught, bro. So everything you see me do on camera, where my hands are concerned, I'm just self taught, bro. I teach myself everything, I do everything myself. I would have been taught nothing by nobody. Um, it's, you know, boxing started, there's a video on here of me punching a, a bag about three years ago, two and a half, three years ago. And it's a black bag and it's not one of the heaviest bags in the gym. It's quite a light bag really. Yeah. And if you look at my technique from then to now, I was fucking leaps and bounds. It's so different, but it's took a while to get from, I've always had a big hard punch, right? I've always known and understood how to transfer body weight. But the speed difference now and the way that I transfer has been the graft I've put in there. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. Just so many hours just punching. So I don't know jiu-jitsu. I've never learned myself jiu-jitsu. It's hard to learn yourself jiu-jitsu. Striking's a bit different. You can learn yourself how to strike. But you can't really learn yourself how to roll with somebody until you roll with them. I mean, learning yourself to strike until you're in a, a fighting situation only take you so far. But I have had quite a few fights over my life, so I do understand how that works. But in a jiu-jitsu situation, unless you're rolling with somebody, that's what it's called, isn't it? Don't, I'm not claiming to know anything about jiu-jitsu yet. I fucking know nothing. But I'm sure it's called rolling with somebody, isn't it? When you get on the mat and roll around with them and do your twists and turns. I've never done that. And you need somebody really to roll with, don't you, to learn jiu-jitsu. Well, yeah, really. Yeah, so I mean, it's a complete different gravy, obviously. I do realise that, but I'm not, I'm not, you know something, you'll realise from watching me online that I am the realest fucker on here, mate. I'm so real. I'm a realist. I believe in, because if you're a realist, this is where I looked it right. I'm, I don't live in no fantasy land. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a realist. So... Like, people ask me, you think you beat this person up online? And I'm like, I don't know unless I fight him. Like, yeah, but I think you'd smash him. Yeah, but I don't know unless I fight the person. And if I had a fight with the person, then we would find out if I would win or lose. Because you've got to be realistic about this. Yeah? Yes, there is some people in life that you know you would beat in a fight because they've never had a fight in their life. They've never trained. Obviously, that's obvious, right? But when it comes to people who train themselves or they've got any kind of skill level themselves or whatever, or they've had a few fights... You don't know what's going to happen until you have the fight. And with me going in like that, when I go into a fight, it allows my, you know, the butterflies that turn into rage and adrenaline. Well, it allows a lot of adrenaline to flow. Yeah, which will keep you safe in these situations and fights and stuff. I found that. Control, not letting it overtake you, having a semblance of control, but letting that adrenaline flow. It makes you so much faster, so much more resilient, so much quicker, so much po more powerful, yeah? So it's not wise really to be of that mindset where I'm harder than everybody, nobody can touch me, I'm harder than any fucker. No, it's better to be of the mindset where you don't know, you know, you're confident in your own abilities and you know what you can do, but you don't know what your opponent can do until you fight them. So I think it's better to go through life with that mentality with everything in life though do you know what I mean I'm a realist so Danny could you surf a 60 foot wave no it'd kill me now I could now because I can surf a 20 foot wave I could say yeah I could do a 60 footer but it would be a lie I couldn't handle a 60 footer it would kill me do you get what I mean this is the way that I'm very real compared to most people very real 
And this is why I don't really apologise for anything that I say. Because if I say it, I kind of mean it. Yeah? And I never say anything untoward or anything without a, a reason. Yeah, it is Edinburgh. 100% is. Well, we know it's the same person, but I don't talk about the gigs when they're no more. I just don't. I'm so past that shit, bro. I'm so past that childish bullshit, bro. I'm a different kettle of fish to that kind of shit. And so, yeah, my hand speed and all that. Just to answer your question, it's all self-taught, mate. It's all self-taught. Biking works. What do you mean biking works? I don't know what you mean by that, bro. <laughs> biking works. What do you mean biking works, bro? What's a biking work? You've lost me there. Totally straight over my head, bro. I don't know what that means. I honestly ain't got a clue what that means, bro. You'd have to re re-elaborate what you're on about there, Rush. <laughs> what are you on about? What the fuck is a biking work, bro? <laughs> Alright, Matthew, how you doing? How you doing, bro? You good? I'm just chilling. Chilling. Before I've got to go on my frigging computer. I've got a laptop, obviously. To do a live speaking bike, and I can't speak through a bike like that, bro. Yeah, bro. Well, listen, that that kind of talk, yeah, it bounces off me, bro. As you've probably seen, yeah, through all of this shit that people have been trying to stir on my name for the last fucking ten days or whatever, yeah, right. Just bounces off me, bro. Do you know why it bounces off me? Because obviously I know what I am. You get what I'm saying? So that's why it bounces off me, bro. I'm not really fucking bothered. You know what I mean? I'm just not bothered at all. Like, at all. <laughs> I'll just call you Moto, bro. Damn the man, uh, what level was I on, bro? You want about Assassin's Creed? You want about Assassin's Creed? I completed it. Done. Done. I'm playing COD again now, you know. I'm on Call of Duty, man. I was on Warzone two days ago. I'm going on Warzone again tonight for a couple of hours. I've also got to upload that Rumble video. which will be a lot easier for me to do now, which I'm going to get to doing once I've eaten the food. And then I'm going to do that once it's uploaded. While, whilst it's uploading, I'm going to play my game. And then late tonight, it'll probably be ready for you to give and view. But yeah, I'm playing Warzone again. Uh, I haven't, I haven't like, yeah, I'm on Twitch later, Matthew. Um, I don't know what time, but I'll be on Twitch later. Probably about eight o'clock, seven, eight o'clock, something I'll be on. Um, yeah, I haven't played for a year. So I went on the other day, man, and I was getting mashed up, man. <laughs> getting sniped in head and everything. But it's all good fun. And the live from the other night was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yes, happiness. How you doing, man? You good? Um, yeah, like, it was, it was funny, man. Because if you watch the live from the other night, near the end of the live, I'm in a window, right? This is, a, this is just classical me, Mush. I swear, I'm playing my mate, Alfie. Yeah, and some other guy on our team. I think the other people who was on team with him and I were getting pissed off, you know. Because I get getting like I was just I was getting shot and shit, but I have I haven't played COD for a year. Do you know what I mean? I've got no guns and the fuck all. So I'm just running around whatever I pick up off the floor, whatever bag of shit I've got, yeah. Right. I swear, I killed a good good few people. Oh no, I went on at one point I did go on a killing spree. I think I killed about five people in a row, yeah. But listen to this. We're in like the semi-last circle. We're not in the last circle. We're in the semi-last circle, right? Yeah? 
And I'm in a building and Alfie's running around killing and this other guy's running around killing. He's playing trios, right? And I've got a team in front of me in the building and this geezer run out the door. And I, you, when you're near each other on this, you, you have proximity chat. So I'm hearing people all the time and I'm like, what's going on here? So this geezer's run out the door. I've shot him. He's gone, yo, shit. I've been shot. I've been shot. I've gone, yo, bro, is that you? I've just shot you, yeah. And he went, yeah, it is. I went, don't worry, bro. I won't kill you. Go and jump behind that wall over there and heal yourself. He jumped behind the wall, bro. His teammate ran out of the building. I went, is that your teammate? Jumped over the wall. I was like, boys, don't worry. I won't shoot you. But you want to move from there. You're really exposed. <laughs> and then another one ran out of the building. Yeah, right. And it didn't look like the same geezer. Shot him again. Stripped his shields, right. I could have deaded these geezers, right. And he went, yo, that's me, bro. That's me. I was like, oh, shit. Sorry, bro. I need some shields, innit? You know what he said to me? He said, if I find what building you're in and I come across you, yeah, I'll give you some shields. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm over the road from you, mate. <laughs> and then I was like, I've got twos on the spliff in the ashtray for you here, bro. And my mate Alfie was like, yo, Danny, what are you doing? When I'm making friends. <laughs> Literally. I was like, I'm making friends on the opposite team. They're my boys now. <laughs> Alfie was like, you just carry on, Danny. You just carry on doing your thing. <laughs> so, yeah. Fucking hell. I did get hit by a couple of wicked sniper shots the other night. Like I had Alfie, I was playing with Alfie and then was playing with just a random squad mate, you know, that we got match mate with, yeah. And I was in a game with this one geezer, probably the first or second game that I played. I played about six games, seven games, but I was on for about the first, sec, first or second game I played. I'm on with this dude and at the beginning I went, don't expect no magic from me, bro. I'm a new... Yeah, I'm a total beginner. I don't even know the man. Right? He's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So I was running over this thing and I got shot by a sniper. And I saw like the kill cam and the angle and I saw how he did it. Yeah. And the bloke who I was on the squad with straight away, he was like, cheater, aimbot, cheater. And I was like, well, I don't think that was cheating. He just hit me clean. It was just a really good shot. And then we got to like... I'm not sure if it was the game when we got to third. We come, the best game I had, I got to third, right? But it was the game when I went on my little killing spree. So I went on a killing spree. Killed like five men in a row, yeah? And I've come out of this building. As I've come out of this building, the geezer are opposite. And he must have known the map. He must have known there was a gap. And I got pinged right in the, right in the centre of my forehead, bro. Dropped me clean. Good shot. Because I was running. Even though I was running towards him, still it was just boom. Do you know what I mean? It's a fair play. Good shot. And then everybody was like, aimbot, cheating. I was like, they're not cheating. He just had me to rights, like, you know what I mean? He knew where I was coming, he hit me clean in the head. So I think nowadays everybody just presumes if you get killed, they're cheating. You know what I mean? It's not the way it works. Some of these people spend all the fucking days on this game. That's all they do. <laughs> and me, I ain't played for a year. So when I go onto this game and I ain't played for a year and I'm coming against some geezer, who's sat there for eight hours a day. Yeah, it's his life and that. <laughs> I'm going to get killed. It's, I'm probably going to die. <laughs> so, yeah, it was funny. Funny. I died loads. I died loads. At one point, listen to this, I've got an RPG, right? Alfie's fighting with his two geezers. I've, like, flanked them. Because I still remember how to do all this shit, but my reactions are shit now. My aim is not very good. Right? So... <laughs> I'm like flank him, flank him. It's on video. Well, I'm not joking. This is all on Twitch. To save the videos in it for like a week or two weeks of the past streams. Yeah. So I picked up a rocket launcher in the building. Alfie's like, yeah, I'm under attack. I'm having a fight. I'm having a fight. I'm like, yeah, yeah, bro. I'm on my way. So Alfie's having a fight down here. So I've flanked. You see me do it, man. I've flanked all the way around the tree line, man. And I've got behind these dudes. I've got him dead to rights. I've got an RPG in my hand. Listen to this. The geezer was only about 50 foot in front of me. He was about 50 foot in front of me. Me getting all flustered, getting all excited, right? I've lifted the RPG and fired it about 10 metres in front of me and then he blew myself up. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing, man? Yeah, so... That didn't, that was terrible. <laughs> that was terrible. But I haven't played it for ages. It's so different running into somewhere and chopping mans up with a sword on Assassin's Creed to playing bloody Call of Duty. I swear. My sensitivity is as it's set. And it seems so fast. It's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? 
this is how I used to play the game. This is how I used to play it. How could I even fucking control this shit? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I feel like a total noob. It's funny. It's pro- I don't know the maps neither. I was like, yo, I'm, I'm fighting down here. I'm in the building, second floor. I'm like, what building? <laughs> what second? How do I get up there? Do I jump on a bin? Is there some ladders? <laughs> There's some stairs in there. How the fuck do I get up there much? By the time I find a way up to the second floor, he's dead and they're waiting to kill me. I'm like, shit, I'm a bit late. A bit late to the party here, boys. Sorry. <laughs> yes, happiness. How you doing? I'm glad you're having a good day, bro. Uh, Moto. Mm. You've got to be... Right, I'll give you some advice. If anybody wants to start a YouTube channel, right? I did this the wrong way, okay? I am not very computer savvy. I've got a laptop in there that I've had for about seven months. I've used it about fucking ten times. It's what I have my fucking rumble on. Oh, it's so much hard work for me to figure out this shit. Yeah, I swear to God. Otherwise, with the laptop combined with my phones, mate, I'd be able to put things in my videos. I can't do none of that. I ain't got a fucking scooby do, right? When I first came on YouTube, I didn't know algorithms existed. I didn't know. Thought it was all freedom of speech. No, it's not. Now, when I first came on, it was pretty bad. Now, though, it is Spartansly, right? Now, it is terrible. So, you've got to be careful. Because once the algorithm picks your channel up, talking about anything it doesn't want you to, and the list is massive now. There's so many things you can't talk about. And if you mention them, Oh, trust me, you are ghosted. You are kept out of recommended. Your own people who watch your videos will not get notified when you're live. All that kind of good shit, which is what I go through. So it would be quite lucrative, probably, if this shit didn't happen to me. But because of what I've spoken about in the past, I've spoken about this. I've spoken about things to do with the government and wars that have been lies and all that kind of stuff. All that kind of good stuff that you do all need to know, really. Can't speak about that on you. I can say this because the algorithm won't pick it up, but there's a man in the world that sniffs kids that runs the world. Can't, you know what I mean? You know all that, right? Can't talk about that on you. Can't. Can't play no music on you. Can't have nothing copyright on you. Nothing at all. At all. Like this this live that I've done, this cooking live, I haven't spoken about anything that would get it demonetized. But I bet you it's demonetized. Probably because I showed the mushrooms with the label on the mushrooms in the stream or something like that. Yeah. It's so hard to stay monetized as well. So if the algorithm wasn't so ruthless and brutal and the YouTube rules and regulations wasn't so brutal then you'd be fine and it is mad bro because you will find channels on here that are doing stuff on their channel and talking about stuff constantly every single day you would not want to watch them but they've got millions of subs bro they're pushed right out there do you know what I mean Harold smash our stepdad. Never, never mind computers, you need to start training. That's Paul Venn saying happy with you. I've actually watched that video on Paul and what he said. Yeah. To be honest, I think that's just Paul venting because he's angry, right, about YouTube. But YouTube is a place where loads of people do this. They constantly do this. And the thing that Paul needs to get into his head is that these people who are doing this, I think it's his comment section that's doing it in because of the horrible, hateful things people put in comments. Well, first and foremost, ban and delete them. Just get them off your channel. I've I've said this before, right? People who are hateful, and I mean hateful, 
saying stuff about Paul's family or whatever, right? They don't deserve a voice. People think people should have freedom of speech and be allowed to say whatever they want. No, they should not. When people are saying absolutely disgusting, hurtful things, they should have nothing but ban and delete, ban and delete. And then secondary, Paul needs to understand that these people couldn't lace up his boots, man. They honestly couldn't lace up his boots. Do you get what I mean? So he should not be bothered about their opinion on him. Because I know Paul's a good man, no matter what he said about me. I have nothing against Paul. And I know he's a good geezer, right? But at the moment, he's being hit by what I call the YouTube blues, yeah? He's going to have to learn to get more resilient. Seriously, because YouTube's a horrid place, full of horrid people, especially this side of YouTube that I find myself in and Paul finds him, his self in. We would prefer not to be on this side of YouTube, but we are. There's nothing we can do about that now. But all we can do is control the traffic that comes to our channel and ignore hate coming from people who are so beneath us. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah? So I don't hate Paul for what he said and venting. I do think, to be honest, it was out of order for him to even mention my name like that. Because I didn't say anything bad in that video. I don't know the ins and outs of Brett May, which I did say at the beginning of the video. I don't know his friends, I don't know his reputation, I don't. I'm only going on the few things that I see on YouTube. And I don't watch Brett May's channel, but I have nothing against him. But lots of bad things have been said about Danny Christie, right? I've never gone against Danny Christie. I've never gone with that, that, you know, that fold. Never gone with anybody else's opinion. I don't do that. I have nothing against Brett. Nothing personally against Brett whatsoever, right? But Paul, I like. And I've had a bit of interaction with Paul. I actually like Paul. So for him to say that on camera, with the, with the anger that was behind the voice. There was just no fucking need for it whatsoever. And that's on him, not on me. Because I never said not one thing bad in that video about Paul. And I've never said anything bad about Paul. Not fucking once. Not fucking once have I said anything bad about that man. I don't do this YouTube craze. If I like somebody, I like them. And unless you've done something wrong to me, or you're a convicted, you know, like Shadow or someone like that, yeah? then I'm not going to be nasty to you. And that's just who I am. And nobody can tell me who to have an opinion on. Nobody. That's just not me. Nobody can ever tell me who to have an opinion on and what my opinion is. That is just not Danny G, mate. I have my own opinions and they are mine and they will always be mine and nobody will change them. So I have no reason to apologise to Paul at all, because I never said nothing bad about him. At all. Do you get what I mean? Think about it. You all watched the video. What did I say bad? I didn't say anything bad. And I have nothing against Paul. At all. But nothing. At all. I like the geezer. So, do you know what I mean? So that's that done. I don't need to talk about it no more. <clears throat> Do you know what I mean? That's, I don't need to talk about it no more. You have to understand, I don't sit here watching... Yes, Ruben. I, I don't sit here watching this dark side of YouTube all day. I don't involve myself in this, in this side of YouTube. How would I stay this positive if I did? Honestly, I watch certain people that I like, occasionally, or sometimes I'll see a video on my feed that intrigues me, yeah? But other than that, I do not sit here watching this side of YouTube. I watch golf videos, man. <laughs> I watch scientific videos. I watch fucking videos about the pyramids and shit, yeah? Or I watch comedic stuff. I don't, I don't involve myself in the negative side of YouTube. So if I make a video on my opinion, it is my opinion on the little bits that I've seen of whatever situation is going on. I haven't delved deep into it because I don't involve myself like that in this YouTube beef. 
It's other people's beef. It's not my beef. So I don't involve myself like that. And I personally think that when I give an opinion on something, it is respectable 99% of the time. Yeah? I always try and give a respectful opinion unless it's of a, a proper fucked up dude or something on YouTube. Then it might be different. But I have never said anything bad about Paul. Nothing. I've just given my honest opinion on what I think would happen if them two met and had a fight. So like I said, I think the stress of people that are beneath Paul is what has made Paul make that video. Because he's stressed, right? Yeah? He's getting it from all angles, from dickheads as well. Like dickheads, Paul. People who are beneath you, bro. They're so fucking far beneath you, it's unreal. Literally. Just rise above them. It's my advice to you. Rise above them. It's not worth <laughs> letting their opinion of you matter. It's your opinion of you. That's what I always go on, folks. I always say it. If I look in the mirror and I see a good fucking man looking back at me, that is all that matters. I don't give a shit about nobody else's opinion of me. It's just my opinion of me that matters. That's what should have mattered to all of you. It should, should matter to all of you. It, and it gives people no power over you, neither. It takes power away, do you understand? Yeah, anybody can have an opinion, do you know what I mean? And it takes power away from people, do you understand, when you really don't give a fuck of somebody else's opinion, especially somebody over the other side of the camera that you've never met in your life. Especially that, right? And it takes the power away from the trolls. Because if you genuinely, like me, I genuinely don't give a fuck about nobody's opinion of me, but mine. I have a good moral basis. And I know if I'm being a good man or I'm not being a good man. And I'm quite happy to admit it to myself in the mirror. So if I look in the mirror and I see a good man, that is all that matters. We all have faults, right? Nobody's perfect. But that's all that matters. Not somebody's fucking opinion 100 mile away or 50 mile away or 200 mile away. And that's my advice to everybody. It takes power away from these fuckers. Because you genuinely don't give a fuck what they think. It adds freedom. It gives you so much freedom. To just be you and say, fuck you. It gives you so much freedom, I swear, folks. To just be yourself and say to anybody who don't like it, fuck off. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's a brilliant feeling. I can't drill it into you enough. Get that mindset. I don't give a fuck what you think, Mush. How about that? Spin on it. I swear. I'm going to smoke one more doobie with you and the food will be about done. So yeah, that's, that's, that's where it is. With me and Paul, no, no, no hard feelings for what he said in the video. He didn't say anything particularly bad anyway. He was just venting in an angry way. You know what I mean? He's going through loads of stress from this fucking app, which I do understand. Because it can get you like that. You know what I mean? So I do understand. And I have nothing against Paul whatsoever. Yeah? Um, I wish him the best of luck with whatever endeavours he's doing. But you do need to chill out, big guy. You really do. And you do need to recognise when somebody's got nothing against you, which I haven't. Yeah? It's the last thing I want to say on the man. Yes, Harold. Respect, bro. I'm just me, bro. I, like, I am, a, I am a nice person, bro. I am a nice person. I really am. I prefer to be nice than nasty. I really do. I honestly do. It's a better way to live your life, mate. The better way to... Being nice to people is rewarding. Being nasty to people is never a reward. You never get a reward for being nasty. You end up punishing yourself. Do you know what I mean? Some people... I mean, this world is not candy-coated. Sometimes we have to employ nastiness towards people. We do. Yeah? But... It's, it's, it's few and far between, really, in my opinion. For me, it's if somebody's in my face and they want to hurt me or somebody's in my missus's face and they want to hurt my missus, then I'll do what I need to do in that situation. Other than that, 
I'd rather just interact with the world in a happy vibe and I kind of just avoid a negative vibe because I don't want to be there. I've been there and I don't want to be there. I am on some... Oh, I can't remember what it's called, some Cali stuff. Decker's on his way home, what do I think of that? Well, he's on his way home. <laughs> what else do you want me to think? <laughs> he's on his way home. Um, what else can I think? I don't really get involved with Decker, really, do I? If you look on my channel, I've made a few videos about Deck, but not really that many. I'm not one of these people who just goes at him like a fucking... I'm not one of the pack of hyenas that just do this all the time, am I? So... Decker's coming home, getting himself away from the Philippines. He should have probably never gone there in the first place. Ah, oh, Graham, like I said, he was venting, bro. It's one of them ones. Do you know what I mean? It's no biggie. Do you know what I mean? It's no biggie. He didn't say anything particularly nasty. Do you know what I mean? He was just angry, wasn't he? But you can't really let YouTube get you like that. But I can understand how it can get you like that. Like, obviously I can. Of course I can. Do you know what I mean? I've been hit from bare angles, bare times, with YouTube stupid shit. So I know how it can get you, man. I really do. But you do have to rise above it. And it sometimes it can take a while before you get to that point where you're able to do that. I'm very able to do that. But n not everybody is. Not everybody's able to just rise above it. It takes a while to get your head round how to rise above it. You know what I mean? It really, really does. Yes, Pac. You'd love to see me fight too, Decker. Oh, that'll probably never happen, bro. We'd probably never have a reason to fight. Unless somebody put 50 grand on the line and said, Danny, fight him, I'll give you 50 grand. Win or lose. Well, then you'd finally see me fight, Decker. But other than that, you'd never see that happen, bro. Like I said, I have had my opinions on Decker in the past. Yeah, and I wouldn't have him in my house and I wouldn't befriend the guy. That's definite. Yeah, that's 100%. But I'm not part of the bully brigade that you know that's going after him. So I'm pretty sure he's got bigger fish to fry, mate, than even worrying about me. There's plenty of other people that I think he's going to be gunning for. But he'll never get a fight with them anyway. The people that met the videos on Decker primarily are never going to entertain that man to fight him. There's never in a million years. They might make the videos, but they haven't got nothing behind them, you know, that they can go with, like, with this, like, the people who make all them videos all the time. Seriously. The only person I could see maybe fighting him again, honestly, just for a massive payday, and to settle the first fight, would probably be Danny Christie. I could maybe see Danny Christie fighting him again, maybe, because obviously Decker's profile's been raised to the roof now, isn't it? So when he comes out, there might be some rich person out there that offers a big fight between him and Danny. Do you know what I mean? Like big money, you know what I mean? And to be honest, Danny would be a fool not to take it. He'd be a fool not to take him, because Danny can bang, yeah? I don't know who'd win out of that fight. Um, I really don't. Because I would say that Danny's more skilled than Decker. This is, this is, I mean... See, I guarantee you Danny Christie won't have a problem with what I'm going to say now. Because I'm just giving my assessment of two fighters here, right? I'd say Danny Christie is more skilled than Decker. Like, quite a bit more skilled, to be fair. Yeah, but I would say that Decker's more durable. The man's like a piece of stone. He can take serious bangs, yeah? Danny is faster and more experienced and he's got better technique right and he can still take a bang don't get me wrong Danny can still take a bang but he is he's got better technique than Decker and he's faster than Decker and he's been fighting for quite a while now in the BKFC so it would be a very interesting fight I do think Danny would probably win that fight but I do think it would be a fight where both men took a fucking beating <laughs> I'll tell you that now because I think to put Decker down and out, you've got to hit him sweet on the sweet spot. So if you hit him anywhere here, here on the cheekbones, even if you split him 
split his eye open, bust his nose. He's not bothered. He's going to keep coming forward. The only way you're going to put that man down is to hit him bang on the sweet spot and put him to sleep. You know what I mean? Which I know can obviously I know Decker can be put to sleep because I watched. Is it Gary Furby? It's Gary Furby in it. Back in the day, and he hit Decker once, bang, and put him to sleep, put him clean on his ass, done, fight over. So that was because he hit him clean in the sweet spot. Everybody has a sweet spot, you know. Everybody's somewhere on the jaw, usually between like here and here. Somewhere between there and there is usually everybody's sweet spot. Nah, I'd never be a fair play man for a YouTube fight. There's plenty of other people out there who could be a fair play man. who would probably better than me. You know what I mean? Seriously, there's probably a good fucking, I don't know, five people on YouTube that are around this stuff all the time. I mean, obviously, Danny, Paul. Um, who else we got? That big guy that Paul sparred. What's his name? Jack Draper? Is that his name? Jack Draper? I think so. That big guy that Paul sparred recently, like a few weeks ago. Yeah? I think he could probably do fair play in that. Yeah, but for me, I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm probably the last person somebody would want as fair play. It's not like I've ever really done that before. Thinking about that, I'd probably be a good ref. Because I, I probably would be a good ref, because I wouldn't allow no dodginess going on. Man's would get thrown <laughs> if dodginess was going on. I'd just grab my and go, no. What do you mean? Fuck off. <laughs> now stand, sit down. I'm the ref. Oh, I would, bro. There'd be no nastiness going on. If it's a fair fight and it's just fists, there's no elbows, there's no biting, there's no head butting, nothing. And I am the type of geezer, you know, literally, if I had to, I would put somebody to sleep in the middle of the ring, bro. If I had to, I'd just, I'd just be like, I'd warn the geezer. And if he started doing some mad shit to the other dude when he was on the floor, I'd just come behind him, boom. And I swear to God, I'd be asleep in seconds. It'd be his own fault. Because I wouldn't allow that, do you know what I mean? I'm not like that. So I probably would be good at it. We don't talk about that geezer here, Lukey. We don't talk about grasses here, mate. Grassing's terrible. Oh, I'd definitely beat Declan Call of Duty. Fuck me, bro. I'm going to tell you something now, yeah? Right? I'm going to tell you something now. You get fucking Decker, right? Fucking Karate Marty, Brett May, Danny Christie, and Paul Venice. Line them all up behind a fucking Xbox and let them play one game each, mate. And I'll have them. Oh, I'll have them. I won't even need no break. We don't need rounds. Just keep coming, boys. Keep coming. I'll fucking have you on Call of Duty. Every fucking one of you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And on the golf course. I'm a fucking joke. If you knew karate, Marty, yeah? Get on that golf course with me, boys. I don't fucking have you. I'll have you on your knees by the seventh hole. You'd be like, fucking please, Danny. Stop beating the shit out of us. No, mate. You're in more fucking territory now. We're on the golf course, boys. <laughs> You'd never have all them people on the golf course. Because uh, I've never played golf with Decker. Ever. In a million years. Like, I'd never be around Decker, you know. I'm not going to cut... See... Here's another thing. Oh, you should call Decker a, a wrong gun because of all the information that you lot have obviously sat there and just... I don't watch that much. I watch the odd thing here and there. So for what I've seen with my own eyes, I can't call him a wrong one. I can just say that, in my opinion, he's a weird guy and there's something off about the guy that would never let me be around him. Ever. I've got a weird feeling about the guy. I will say that, yeah? Right? So, I'd never have Decker around me. Marty, no chance. I couldn't be around someone like that. I couldn't. Yeah? I just couldn't. I just couldn't. He'd do my fucking head in. Yeah? He'd just do my head in. Paul Venice I could play golf with. Probably Danny I could play golf with. Yeah? Who else is there? I could play golf with Dr. Rackpool. That would be funny, man. Playing golf with Doc would be fucking hilarious. It made me laugh all day. Yeah? I could play golf with JDP. I could play golf with Bruno Banzers. Um, I could play golf with Beezy. Yeah, these are all YouTube channels. Um, I could probably play golf with Ed Jugman. 
because he is funny in my opinion. Not that I'm like a big follower of a Jogman, right? But man, just I mean, a lot of these YouTubers, it would be funny watching them go around the golf course. To be fair, yeah, just to see if they could make it around the fucking golf course. Some of them without snapping all the clubs over the knees. <laughs> Some of them because they're that unfit and unhealthy because they'd struggle to get around the course. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, right? I'm telling you. It'd be a mad live if I got loads of YouTubers together and got them all to come and play golf for me. That'd be a mad live, that one. <laughs> I'll tell you that now, mate. That would be a mad live. You'd see tempers flare, people smashing up trees, clubs getting snapped over knees. I've had enough. Fuck this. Fuck it. Oh, it'd be funny. You'd have geezers laughing at them. The other geezer laughing at them. Then he'd fall over. He wouldn't be able to make it up in hill. He'd be dying when he got to the top hill. He'd be breathing out his ass. But like, what the fuck is going on here? Oh my god! Put in fucking seven. Put in on a green and that. You know what I mean? The round would take forever. It'd take about freaking ten hours, man. Oh, Koala Keith would beat anybody, mate. Let's not get it back and twisted. Right, yeah, back and down, get it twisted, mate. Koala keeps the back man. There's not a man on this planet that could take on Koala Keith. This guy right here wrangles crocodiles, mate. And all that, I'm not talking about those little 16 fatters. I'm wrangling 45 crocodiles, mate. All ones came out more tent in the outback. Right, this is a story for you now from Koala Keith coming at you. I once came out more tent and I was sweetly good. I had myself an anaconda. Now you think they only live in the Amazon, but now they live in the airback as well, mate. And next to him, he had ten. Ten. Not nine, not eight. Ten. Right? Ten antsman spiders. He had them under his control with his viper guys. I wrangled them. I dangled them and I handled them. By the end of the scaffold, the whole of the outback knew that Koala Keith was out there with his actual meat set dangling and wangling in the breeze. But there wasn't a mark on me, I swear to God, not a fucking mark. Went out to the shield the next day. It was in the local Aboriginal news. <laughs> Koala Keith, mate. I'm fucked about with that guy, he's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no man can be quite a kid, mate. Right? There's no there's no living thing that has blood in the universe that can beat Koala Keith Bush. Are you fucking mad? I've heard about that geezer. He's a right bit of a fucking handful he is, mate. That Koala Keith and that man is like crocodile fucking dandy on crack. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's your answer, but Skull. Ah, is the pastor on? <laughs> Koala key for the whole day. Oh, I don't know, you know. It takes some throat twisting, throat proper, you know. All right, to go from this to, all right, mate, you all right, you can't. <laughs> it takes a bit of fucking tongue twisting. I don't know if I'll be able to, I, I think I'll end up dropping out by accident. There it is. You know, giving him, giving him chopping with Tony, I'm like, right then, can't. We need some parking free. <laughs> Everybody's been like, what the fuck's going on? I've got the apples and the pears and the bananas, babe. <laughs> Go over there and get us some kangaroo steaks and some fucking ostrich. <laughs> what fucking watering bottles? What do you fucking mean we've got watering bottles? In the outback, we have to go and fucking get it from four mile away. <laughs> but in this country, you got watering bottles. <laughs> fucking bottles. 
put a shrimp in your fucking pasta dingo day. Make that shit special, taste like something you've never heard before out here, mate. Out here, we used to eating anything we can get his fucking hands on. <laughs> grip the grubs, mate. You ever had a fucking grip the grub? You've never fucking had a grip the grub like I've had a grip the grub. <laughs> we had um, ostrich in a couple of lives back. I cooked it on live. We had ostrich steaks. It was all right, man. It was like a smoky meat, wasn't it, bro? Mm -hmm. Koala Keith, you wouldn't even fucking see him if you was looking at him, mate. What do you mean? He's got special powers, that can. He's got all active camouflage. <laughs> Whatever environment he's in, it reflects the light 360 degrees. So if I'm stood in front of a fucking lamppost, you just see the fucking lamppost, can <laughs> That's how I come off and wrangle myself 20 crocs in one evening, mate. You try wrangling 20, 40 foot crocs, mate, by yourself, with a piece of rope, a tarpaulin, and a peg off the washing line. Koala Keith might sound like he's fucking from the fucking down in the Australian fucking outback that don't fucking understand quantum physics. But I worked out the refraction of light many years ago, mate, with Pythagoras theorem. I had to use a little bit of quantum physics and the speed of light to come up with the deduction I could be invisible to the whole fucking world. They wouldn't even know I was there if I was stood next to him, can <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the mathematical equation, because you wouldn't fucking understand it even if you did. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's just say I've had a fucking hand in everything on this planet, mate. Been alive for about fucking 3,000 years, can Interview the fucking dark side of fucking YouTube. This koala key, right, coming at you. Oh, I'd have them badoodles, wouldn't I? They're having an interview with me. I'm like, right then, cunt. When was the last time you had a fight with the kangaroo? Give me a straight answer. Don't fucking lie. I'll see it in your eyes. <laughs> I've heard it's not fashionable in the UK for women to have every on pits in the beard. Well, in the outback, that's just more fucking insulation than a cold night, mate. <laughs> so I'd like to ask you, mate, is it true that in the UK you like your women hairless? Because <laughs> out there in the outback, mate, you got yourself a good woman if you've got a hairier chest than you. We call them the Sheilas of the Sheilas, mate. <laughs> Very high fucking prize, fucking catch of the day, that. <laughs> oh, I fucking knew that chopper. That fucking mark chopper read, mate. Fucking crazy, you can't. Quality loves cheesecake. Back in Birmingham is lovely. Fucking beautiful, mate. You've got a nice fucking canal down here. With some edible fish in there, if you're fucking brave. <laughs> yes, that's an it. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to this food, folks. I'm looking forward to this food. I really, really am. I'm proper looking forward to this food. I'm hungry now. I'm hungry. Then he's hungry. I'm really hungry. Oh, I've got videos to upload all tonight, man. I've got Twitch to play as well. My work is never done. And I did tell you in it for about seven, maybe ten days, you only get a few lives off me, and I promised you, what did I promise you all? I promised you a training live, which I gave you on Monday, 
and I promised you a cooking live, which I've given you today. And I said, you get some videos, you've had a couple, you have some more. Yeah, don't know what they'll be on. You know what I'm like, random as fuck. The Rumble video will be uploaded for you all in the morning at the latest for you to go and enjoy. Um, I'm great, Mr. Profit. How are you? Yes, the Sean Winston. How you doing, brother? Vinny. So, yeah. Um, you won't get as many lives over the next seven days off me, but I've got TikTok. I've got to do loads on that. I've got to do another Rumble video, and that shit has to go off one phone. Onto the other phone, onto my little oh, house, a nightmare. Trust me, it's a nightmare. But I've got to do another Rumble video. I need to do about five videos for YouTube. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do yet because you know me, I'm random as fuck, right? And I need to do as many videos on my golf channel as possible because once my hands in cast, I'm not really going to be able to do any golf videos. So my golf channel is going to be pretty dead for a few months. I've got to try and do some videos on mine and Tony's channel. Yeah. I don't know, it's couple stuff, so we're going to have to do, well, we've, I don't know what I'm going to do, like, I've got so much shit to do, but one geezer is unreal much, yeah, so, when I'm back at work, you know, obviously once my hand's fixed, I'll be straight back at work, um, like literally straight back at work, Sean who comes in chat, S Davis Building Construction has already offered me a job, I've took the job, so once I'm back at work, I'll try and keep up with as much content as possible, but it's going to be fucking damn difficult. So the content will slow down when I'm back at work, because there's only so much I can do, do you know what I mean? I have Twitch, three YouTube channels, two TikTok channels, and Rumble, which I do all myself, you know what I mean? There ain't no producer behind me, not him. This is all me, so... You'll, I mean, it's not going to be till the end of May. Yeah, up till the end of May, you'll see me loads. But after the end of May, when I'm back at work, yeah, you'll see me, just not as much as what you normally do. Because like I said, I'll be working every day, bro. Do you know what I mean? Right. I'm going to show you this food. Tony's going to Tony's dishing up now. I'm going to let Tony give you a mark out of 10. I'm going to give you a mark out of 10. And then we're done. Dude, but listen, I just want to make something very clear at the end of this live, yeah? For all the people who support me, give me likes, watch my lives. I do appreciate it all, you know. I really, really do. I appreciate all of you. I really, really do, man. And I try my best, you know, to give you as much content as, as I possibly can. Yeah, I really do try really hard with this shit, right? But I really appreciate every view that you give me, every thumbs up that you give me. So, I mean, I appreciate all of it. I really, really do. You're all top people, man. You really are. You want to see it? No. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, here we go. All right, we're going to get Tony's tray soon. Trajan. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Vinny. I'm glad you had a good birthday. All right, here we go. Tony's first. So here we go. This is it. Tony's got loads on my plate because she knows I'm starving. But here we go. Tony first. Let's get a mark out of 10 from our Tony G. Yeah, that's a good idea. Coin Bob. Mark out of 10 from the Tony G. Oh, I'll get excited when Tony tries this stuff because I don't, obviously I'm thinking, what's she going to give me? This is like a tense time for the Danny G's cooking. It's always a tense time for the Danny G's cooking because is she going to like it? Is she going to like it? Okay, what, what 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 mark? Get a piece of that chicken in your mouth, but let's see if it's still tender and that. It's still, so it's still all good. Yeah? What well, okay, and what mark are we getting time? Um, mark out of ten. Uh, eight. eight. Don't put my bacon, did you? I would have got a ten if I would have put the bacon in, if I would have remembered the bacon. Would it have given you that ten? But... And the garlic bread. Oh man, she's just moaning now. She's just moaning. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't having it, Bab. I ain't having it. You keep scamming me with these marks, man. All right. Right, my turn now. Let's see what Danny G thinks of it. Let's get this Danny G. Oh, it's 
So she give it an eight. An eight's good, I'm happy with an eight. I did miss the bacon out, to be fair. I did miss the bacon out. Yeah. I did miss the bacon. But let's try a piece of this chicken first. Let's get a piece of this chicken down there. That's nice, man. The reason I put so much in this carbonara is because carbonara by itself, actually, when you make it normally, is plain as fuck. It don't taste of anything. And it does make it. I like taste. So, let's have another one. And then I'll give it the mark out of 10. I have to ignore my roof. It'll be decorated soon. That part's not even plastered yet. I'm still waiting for it to be plastered. It's fixed. It's not plastered. I'm going to give it an 8 as well. I'll give it an 8 out of 10 as well, yeah? So, I will give it an 8 out of 10 as well. I mean, my plate's piled. I've got loads on there, but still. Very nice. You want to try and cook it yourself. Enjoy. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Much love and respect. You'll get some videos, but you won't get a live for a few days now because I've got loads of other lives uh, yes, Graham, I've got loads of other lives to, to do on TikTok and I've got videos I've got to do all here and here and here and here. I've got loads of shit to do man, over the next few days, but I'll do a live whenever I can. All right. Much love and respect, everybody. I'll see you all soon. If you want to catch me again tonight, I'll be on Twitch. Um, my Twitch is the Berserker 812. Can somebody put it in chat? Who knows what it is? Um, the Berserker 812. I'll be playing Call of Duty for a couple of hours. Um, can somebody just put the Berserker 812 in chat for me before I go? So I'll be playing Call of Duty, um, Warzone, Resurgence for a couple of hours uh, later on. I've got to try and get that Rumble video sorted for you so you've at least got it tomorrow morning at latest. Um, fucking hell, I've got to upload the golf video from today. So can somebody put the Berserker 812 in chat for me? Because I know there's somebody, some people in here watching on Twitch, so I don't know. I'm just gonna, not going to cut the live off until somebody puts it in chat for me. Oh, Safe, bro. No, Berserk. No, it's the same game attack as what it's always been, bro. GTR, Danny G. XX, GTR, Danny G, XX. It's always been that, it? Same from the Rage, bro. It's never changed. I can't type in chat myself, or I would. Look, I can't type in chat myself. There we go, the Berserk rate one, two. Thank you, SNM. So that's it there, right? Um, that is my tag on Twitch. And just to let you all know, Twitch is like YouTube, you know. You have you can see me while I'm playing the game, so you can see the game and you can see me at the same time. Right? So it is like me being live, but I'm playing a game. Yeah. It it doesn't matter which which way they put it, as as long as it's got the Z in it. B-E-R-Z-E-R-K-A 812. And I'll be on there in a few hours. I'll see you all there. Peace. <laughs>